We are live. What's up, my brother? What's up? Start singing now for you guys when we start these shows. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we are on episode number 93 of the Before the Trainwreck series, the only series that shows you how to not make a train wreck out of your silly life. Uh. We're here to help you guys out. So uh, if you guys don't know who Paul is, you should get to know him because he has quite a good channel and uh, he provides very, very good insight. Uh, he's also one of my, uh, I guess, tenured community members and affectionately known within the community <laughs> as Chad Thunder Cockadoodle Doo. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's um, let's get into the love languages because uh, you put out a great video on your channel that was um, that I enjoyed watching. You know, the other uh, day, and yeah. it, it, and it tied in really, really nicely because I just finished recording a video on my channel, which I'm going to release on Wednesday this week. Mm. A guy emailed me um, this link to <clears throat> Darren Hardy. Sorry, to a Darren oh, yeah, Hardy yeah. video where mm -hmm. he's 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 talking about. Um, you know, showing up for your partner and relationships and all this. And it, and it turned Hardy? out to be a little bit longer than what I wanted to be. It's about a 30 minute video, but trust me, when you guys see it come out on, on Wednesday, you're going to want to watch it. So I'm not going to spoil it, but he talks a lot about the love languages and that. And <laughs> one of the things he was telling guys is mop the floor and that'll be as hot as her looking at a playgirl magazine. <laughs> Yeah, no, Darren. Yeah. Sorry, I really like Darren Hardy, by the way, for his productivity work with his stuff with productivity is awesome. His business stuff is amazing. It's great, but yeah. yep. <laughs> not, anyway, so nope. not not on, not on his relationship advice though. Will not spoil it, advice. but you will want to watch that come <laughs> Wednesday. So I think the first thing that we should do here, because there's a few guys that have already been in the chat that have been uh, chatting it up with each other before we went uh, live. Uh, got some interesting feedback. Uh, okay, there's one of them. Uh, another dude here says some chick tried to turn me on. I love languages. What a load of crap. <clears throat> All right. Oh, yeah. I need some damn water here. Hold on a second. Oof. Yeah. Well, I'll. I want to introduce real quick what the lo the love language. Yeah, do that while. I yeah, while you die over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, can, so, so the uh, the five love languages was a book put out by a guy named Gary Chapman. He was a counselor, okay, um, 1992, so quite some time ago. And he he had a theory that each person had a – well, okay, I'm not going to call it a theory. He had an idea, all right, that each person had a primary and a secondary love language. Those languages – or those, those, those love languages, okay, that quote it, all right, were words of affirmation – quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. And so he had an idea that people express love one of these five ways and that the key to relationship success was that you have to match, you know, have a, have a, a partner match and understand their love language, their right. primary and their secondary. Now, here's the thing. Uh, there's no evidence to support this. Nobody challenged it. There's no, there's no, until 2017, nobody put this to a clinical test at all, like or, or any kind of research. They just assumed they, that sounds like a great idea. And the reason, of course, it sounds like a great idea to get right down to it is because it sets up a transactional sex dynamic, which is what most people in the blue pilled world will call it are used before to. We, before we dive too deep into your mm -hmm. uh, sermon. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's take the quiz so we can get some frame around what it is that this is all about. Uh, yeah. I've plopped it up here. So we've got couples quiz. They actually have a children's quiz, teens quiz. So I guess singles quiz is the one that I'll take as it's most re relevant. Uh, let's get started. I am a male, 45 plus. Uh, we're in the United States. Let's say I have not read the damn book. It is more meaningful to me when... Someone I love sends me a loving note, text, uh, email for no special reason. I hug someone I love. Um, <laughs> you know what's more meaningful to me? When I get one of those text messages with like a naughty picture in the mm -hmm. morning or at a time when I'm busy doing something that's important with like some caption that says, I hope it's not a bad time, but it's like the dirtiest picture. That's mm -hmm. more meaningful to me than both of these. But which one of these two would be the closest? I'm going to say somebody sends me a loving note text. All right, we'll go with that. Oh crap! That we only hit one, and that was three percent. 
This might take a few minutes, but bear with us because there's we're doing research here for you guys. This we're, is research, live, live this research. Is, this is live, just, just for you tonight. And I promise we will entertain you. It is more meaningful to me when I can spend alone time with someone I love, just us. Someone I love does something practical to help me out. See, now we're getting into transactions here, right? Yes, exactly. It's, so... Yeah. It's it's more meaningful if there's some transactional stuff going on. Okay, that would be interesting, right? Because if we're talking about the alpha seed side of the equation, this sure. is what the women are going to pick. If we're yeah. talking about the beta need, this is what they're going to pick, right? Absolutely, and that's what the they the ignore that's what the misses. fact. That's yeah. what it misses completely is that they're cir completely circumstantial. The guy that the losers they've settled with, they want they want. Her, uh, that guy to do something stuff for her, right? Yeah. Um, whereas the guy that they were, you know, banging in college that they had genuine desire for, well, they want to spend time alone with that guy. So their love language will ironically change based on desire, which we'll get to my bingo. Opinion. <laughs> all right, yeah. so l let's go all lovey-dovey. We'll go with the I just love one. Okay, so it's more meaningful to me when someone I love gives me a little gift as a token of our love, of concern for each other. Or I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with those I love. That one. I don't know. I I, <laughs> I kind of like getting woken up in the morning with a BJ. Where's where's that option? Yeah, I, don't I think see that's, that option there. I think it's number two, maybe. Okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just click this one. And keep going through. Ah. Oh, so it's a sequence of choose your own adventure. It's more meaningful if then that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Someone I love does something unexpected for me to help me with a project. I can share an innocent touch with someone I love. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm already Steve from Steve up. from Accounting gets the innocent touch in the uh, in the in the broom closet at the office, right? Whereas you know some guy that she's just kind of you know using for uh, the project Short at play. Her night school yeah. <laughs> or something <laughs> that that he wants to date her, but she's not that interested. Yeah, he's yeah. That's the first one for this that is, guy. <laughs> this is a this is a serious flaw with this quiz system. Yeah, it's it's interesting in concept and. We talked about this, um, not we like as in you and I, but we as yeah. in a group that I was with around 2014 um, at a entrepreneur's retreat. Like we actually talked about this in, in depth and there was a mm -hmm. lot of emphasis put on the reality of this having a better impact on your relationships. This is just, I don't know. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see what else it has. Uh, it's more meaningful again. So each question is always the same. Uh, someone I love puts their arm around me in public. Someone I love surprises me with. Again, where's the wake me up in the morning with a BJ option? I don't see yeah. it there. Okay, so let's go with surprises because that's closer. <laughs> so uh, whoever made this quiz up doesn't even know what BJs are all about. Because it, it would be like, <laughs> someone, it's more meaningful when somebody makes me a sandwich or yeah. <laughs> gives me some skull. Uh, <laughs> stop being silly on YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm around somebody I love, even if we're not doing anything, I can be comfortable holding my hands, high-fiving or putting my armor. Okay, I don't know. So I receive a gift from somebody I love. <laughs> high five. <laughs> hey, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can do awkward I somebody, high five. They like love it. me. I receive a gift. So, so it's about transactions over here. Receiving gifts or receiving attention is what this one's saying. Yeah. I sit close to somebody I love. I am complimented by somebody I love for no apparent reason. I get the mm -hmm. chance to just hang out with somebody I love. So attention, I unexpectedly get small gifts from someone I love. So stuff, attention, stuff, alpha seed, beta need. This is basically <laughs> what it's starting to boil down to. And I hear someone is, I love tell me I'm proud of you. Someone I love helps me with a task. Yeah, this is We're only 33. This, man, okay. This is, do we need to finish this? I don't think oh, so. No. Like you guys get the idea. Like do we we don't need to keep going, right? Let's let's yeah. stop this. Okay. Let's well, and up. here's where. Okay, so that's a big like criticism. I have many criticisms of it, but here's one big one. It's what a big fat waste of time. Like if we were to try to go through that entire quiz, okay, we would spend a good portion of this show, about an hour show, going through this quiz. And maybe, you know, it might take somebody an hour to get through this. Here's the problem, though. These are people that are struggling in their relationships. Oftentimes, by the time they reach and pick up this book, it's because things have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. And they don't have time to waste. And they're putting time and energy into what amounts to very flawed uh, concept. And that's really designed to set men up for failure. Well, men and women both up for failure. Um, I put a, uh, in our little private chat there. Cause I don't have, 
I don't have myself set up to really uh, just throw it in the chat uh, right now. Okay. I don't know why, because but but if you want to, that's that's a um, that's just a link to one one of the studies. The only study really uh, done um, in 2017, finally, 25 years after the inception of the book. And this understand the there. You referenced in your um, video. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and so yeah, that study it was done in 2017. They took 68 couples. And um, or 67 couples rather, and they they assess them based on their love language preference, self regulation, and relationship satisfaction. Mm -hmm. um, the you know the results you know basically said that there was no correlation between relationship satisfaction and their love language. None, None whatsoever. whatsoever. None whatsoever. And it and it boils this down to really what it you know the the real thing if you take nothing else away is that the real dynamic has nothing to do with someone's love language. It has to do with it, or what we should rather appropriately call them for really being scientific here preferences, right? Mm -hmm. I might have a preference for this or that or the other. But it doesn't matter if the person genuinely desires you. And that's the whole point. And we talk about this all the time. When she has genuine burning desire for you and sees you as her best and is pair bonded to you, you could do any one of these things mentioned or none of them at all, and she'll be happy with you. And that's the whole thing. She actually wants, you know what women want? They want all of these things plus more things. They mm -hmm. want it all. But they want it from a guy that they really desire and that they really want. It becomes, a, too, yeah. yeah, it just gets it. They, they, it becomes a negotiation with guys they've settled with that they don't truly desire. That's the dynamic. And by attacking it, the problem in this manner, it, you're setting it up for a transactional relationship. And, and this is why a lot of marriage counseling fails. There are marriage counselors that hand off this book and say, yeah, you guys get your love really? languages in order. Oh Real. yeah. Really? Yeah, because wow. this guy was a counselor and a clinician and, and, and I believe a doctor who came up with it. Yeah, no research behind it until 2017. You know, 25 years later, they got, he has so many versions of this book out, you know, for kids, five languages for, languages for kids, mm. for military. I mean, it's yeah, for whatever. Teens, for couples, like we saw it on the homepage when I landed on it. Yeah, quiz. yeah. And it's like, but who cares? I mean, really, who cares? Because you're interested in somebody, you're going to figure out what their preferences are. You don't need a book to tell you that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, I don't need a book. If I'm really into my chick, I don't need a book to tell me how to pay attention to her and figure out what her preferences are. You know what I mean? But what matters is, does she desire me? Otherwise, because she doesn't, it doesn't matter really what I do. You know, it's, it ends up being a negotiation or a bargain. And I that's, that it that's does accomplish problem. something though. Like what it ends up doing is it, is it deals with crappy relationships in such a way where it builds a better beta. Like yes. if she has a guy that she's not yeah. happy with and she wants him to be better. He's still going to be a beta male that she's not going to be that turned on by, but he'll be, he'll be supplicating her whims and needs that much better. And by yeah. the way, guys, I don't know if Paul, if you can stay around, you know, for the full 90 minutes, but we're going to take Collins, you know, oh, yeah. after, Absolutely. I don't know, 30, 45 minutes or so. We're just going to kind of shoot the breeze and bounce these ideas back and first, back and forth first. And then if you want to call in, you can click the link and ask a question. Right. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. And the so, sad thing is like, on. even for, yeah. So it's even for women though, it's like, they're not conscious of their strate of strategic pluralism. You know, they're just in strategic pluralism as, a, as the evolutionary psychology idea that the, the alpha seed beta needs, you know, dynamic is, 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 is illustrated in what's called strategic pluralism, which is that most women can't find a guy to satisfy all their, genetic desires for mating plus all their needs for provisioning. Okay. So they end up, what they end up doing is sort of going for guys for the, the sex, right. For the desire. And then they sort of settle with the guy that they think that they can live with and that'll help them meet their milestones and all that stuff. But this is all primal and unconscious. You know, this is happening in their hindbrain. It's a driver. So without having some sort of, you know, education on this stuff, which of course, modern gynocentric society, feminism does not educate women on these things. They don't know that this is their operating system. They don't know that this is happening. They get in a relationship and they're told all these things. They, they're told, you know, that guy that you were really hot for, 
that you kind of had all the roller coaster of, coaster of emotions with. Mm. You know, Becky, you don't want to settle with that guy. You don't want to marry that guy. You're just going to have a really tough, you know, he's, he's probably not going to stay with you. He'll probably cheat. So, you know, you need to find the nice guy who matches your checklist. And this And that poor nice guy goes with her. You know, and he's like, oh, he thinks he won the lottery. You know, Becky finally wants to date him. You know, she's been ignoring him for since high school. Now Becky finally wants to go out with him. And, you know, he thinks he won a prize. And she really realizes, you know, the error of her ways. And she's going to settle with him. And then they get along the relationship, meet some milestones, and she's just not happy. And so she's trying to figure it out. And no one's telling her the answers. They're telling her that if she just has a transactional relationship with this dude, that then she's going to be happy. And then, and then she does all this, you know, he's like a clean the kitchen. How about that blow job that I only get on my birthday? And then, and she's like, do, 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 ah, do, I do, just do. didn't. <laughs> right. right. Like, and she's like, like at what I, point uh, did, did, you know? did like Becky, <laughs> when she was at the foam cannon party and Abiza think to herself when she was having a threesome with, Pablo and Juan that, uh, <laughs> Oh wait, hang on a second. We got to get our love languages hashed out here before we start having these gymnastics going on over there from the chandelier. Right. At the yeah. Hotel. Before I get spit roasted, yeah. can we spend some quality time? <laughs> before you spit in my mouth, memory. Pablo, I need to get this uh, quiz taken so that we right. can establish what love language we're going to have here during this transaction that we're going to execute yeah. on. It's Pablo, just, can you know. tell me words of affirmation yeah. <laughs> behind me <laughs> while I get physical touch from <laughs> your friend in front of me? Those okay. are my primary You over there, you do like, like <laughs> what do you do? You have like a room, you know, with a train ready to go. <laughs> so you over there, you're gonna do physical touch, you're gonna do words of affirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's that's the thing. And they, they ignores it completely misunderstands women. I mean, women can have competing ideas and often multiple competing ideas at once in their head. I mean, it's kind of a talent, you know what I mean? And so if you ask a girl like what her love language is, her answer, if she's thinking about the socially acceptable provisioning beta dynamic answer, she's going to give you one set of answers, but her answer for Chad that she's, you know, that's exactly going to see it. on the side and sleep with on the same night and, you know, not tell her mom about that guy. Yeah, that's that's a different answer. The the, you know? the the only answer that you guys need to concern yourself with is does she have genuine burning desire yes. for me? If she exactly. has that, everything else pretty much takes care of itself. The minute that you start taking these quiz to negotiate desire between the two of you in a relationship, you're you're putting yourself in the position of beta bucks. It's it's like it's just never gonna end well. Hey man, you want to hear a funny story? It's a little bit of a side note, but I can segue into this because I got this membership set up on the channel, but the ghost yeah. of Nicholas Nolte. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you remember who this guy is, but I ran into him at a gas station in LA <laughs> last oh, summer. Yeah? <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, I was putting gas in the rental that I had. I was with a friend of mine down there and my kid and mm -hmm. I'm in the gas station. I hear this heavy breathing. And I swear to God, just like in the picture there where you see him in that avatar, he looked exactly like that. Hair was all fucked up, <laughs> breathing heavily. And he was a total train wreck. And I walked outside because I wanted to see what he was driving. Like, I'm thinking he's going to drive something nice. Mm -hmm. He had this uh, old ass Volvo. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they're these like hatchbacks. It's kind of like a mm -hmm. Honda Civic hatchback, but it's a Volvo version. And the car was full of shit. Like the only place there was no garbage in the car was where he was sitting. <laughs> I was I, I was disappointed because I thought he was great in that movie with Steven Seagal. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> back back to the real talk about the five lung lap. The real lap, talk, cause, cause yeah. These I matter what... more than than stories about <laughs> Nolte. Dude, that guy is insane. Yeah, he looks he looks insane. You know what I mean? He's, but anyway, he's, he's definitely gone insane. He's definitely gone insane. I mean, there's something <laughs> wrong with his fucking lost head. It. I'll tell you that. It's probably reading books by Gary Chapman, but yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the author of Five Love Languages. But yeah, so I what mean, else there's we need a number to cover on that. I mean, really, um, yeah, a couple other things. I mean, it doesn't um, doesn't identify. Look, when you go to marriage counseling, this is the whole problem. If you're not identifying the problem, let alone the solutions, you're not going to be successful. And it's like, there's so Wait, many, you can't negotiate those solutions, Paul, you can't just <laughs> yeah. take a quiz and then give words of affirmation and solve the relationship dynamic completely. It doesn't work that way. 
Surprisingly, no. <laughs> Surprisingly, Whoa. no. I know it's crazy, but yeah. And, and this is like today, earlier, my little like live, uh, you know, thing I was talking about. You have to challenge these ideas. People are putting ideas out to you, yeah. and you know, it, it's people take they're taking them unchallenged. Can you? It's unimaginable to me that counselors and professionals were using and still use this material. And it hadn't been challenged for 25 years. They finally challenge it, find out it's bull crap, and they're still using the material. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's like, what? And so you go to somebody that you see as an authority figure, and they tell you a bunch of stuff. It sounds good, but man, it can totally put you way off in the wrong direction. I mean, if you're following this, it, it sets you up as a man to placate to a woman and act less attractive. The problem is she doesn't want to do the things you want her to do with you. She doesn't want to, it's not a love language thing. If she doesn't, she doesn't want to spend time with you. She doesn't want to be physical with you. Maybe she did early in the relationship. And then this guy did a bunch of things that made him appear less attractive to her over the years. And now she's just not attracted. The key is to get her attraction back to get her desire back or to, to leave the relationship. If that can't happen, those are the things to do. This puts him off on a rails where he's doing the opposite of that. No chick is attracted to, Hey honey, I cleaned out the gutters. Like you asked me to, you want to go on a, want to go on Thursday night date night and spend some time. Cause that's your secondary love language. Like kill me. Just Kill, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, that what, pretty what, much. What do you yeah. think guys should do if this if this comes up in a conversation with a woman as they're as they're going about their dating life and maybe spinning plates? <laughs> what would you do if it, you know if you sat down with a chick and she's like, "Hey, Paul, I really like your truck that that big black truck of yours. I really dig that." Have you ever heard about these five love languages? We should take the survey together. Let's take the quiz right now. What would you do? <laughs> I would say my my five love languages is is uh, is sex. And that's it. Sex, 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 sex. <laughs> so actually, it's like primary, sex, 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 and sandwiches. And my, it's all of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah sandwiches are good. Well, you got to uh, eat not, in between every. You know, to refuel. Right. Right. Not being toxic and crazy when we're not seeing each other. That that's good too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's really just it, women love this like they love horoscopes. And you kind of like, cause this is like, you know, I'm a Taurus, you know, like, oh really? <laughs> like, you know, like, and, and the thing I'm an is, MBTI. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kind of go, eh. thing too. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. The personality quizzes and stuff. They love this yeah. crap, you know, I, I, let them love it. Who cares? You know what I mean? They know yeah. I don't, they know I think it's all BS, but here's the thing. It's not like, here's what guys are, <laughs> or get stupid about this. They're going to challenge her and have a logical discussion about how the love languages and her feelings on horoscopes isn't a good idea. Dude, stop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with a woman. You know what I mean? It's not, it, you can just say simply, yeah, that's, uh, that's not my thing. I think it's kind of stupid. How about, how about this? How about we just go have a good time together? That's our love language. We just have mm -hmm. amazing times together. Right. And so I mean, if she wants to talk about it or whatever, that's fine. But do, I, I recommend guys don't get into serious discussions about this stuff where she would get upset um, because you're attacking it logically. And this is what happens. This is where guys, it's just not that important. Guys yeah. always go wrong when they try to try to have a logical, rational discussion about something <laughs> that's completely emotional for her. She's not yes, going to let that's rational discussion uh, impede her emotions. It, it, it just never goes down. So don't try no. to like, you know, whenever guys try to apply like the red pill to a woman, it's like, well, let me explain this concept to you so you can understand your solipsism here. And it's like, yeah. no, dude, yeah, stop no, talking. No, stop talking. <laughs> right. It's a, the go have fun, laugh it off, have a discussion that's less emotionally charged. That's that's the thing. If she if she is emotionally, that's exactly the right way to to look at it. If she is emotionally um, invested in this idea, whether it's five late love languages or horoscopes or anything else that's just bunk, right? Let her whatever. Just be like, eh, it's not my thing. You know what I mean? And move on to the next thing. Don't get into mm. like 
you know, I'm going to debunk this myth for her. Cause guess what? It doesn't matter. She genuinely, des genuinely desires you. It doesn't matter what she thinks your love languages are or what her love. Like she doesn't, she, at the end of the day, she won't even care. Does she does not de matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Does so not matter. Right. Does not matter. All that, all that matters is, does she see you as her best and does she have genuine burning desire for you? Those are, those are the main things, right? I mean, it's, it maybe, really is that simple, you know, maybe like I said earlier, it'll, it'll, it'll solve some problems in some relationships where she's able to build a better beta and mm -hmm. you know, he's going to go and jump through a bunch of hoops to placate her, but yeah, it's, it's not going to serve you guys. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I forgot to ask at the, at the beginning of the show, but do me a favor. If you guys are watching like on Twitter, on Facebook, I dropped the link, hit the link, come join us over on YouTube. It helps me out a ton. Also hit the like button. It helps with the algorithms. I'm going to grab the um, join link for StreamYard. So if you want to ask a question on tonight's topic or something around it, open to everybody, young, old man, woman, bring your question. Let's, you know, even if you disagree with us, let's hear what the disagreement is. Come. Yeah. Um, that that'll make it a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So no, other things, other reasons this is harmful. It, it, you know, guys getting stuck on this idea, be they, they don't vet women properly then, you know what I mean? So like the suggestion from Gary Chapman in, in the book is that, um, guys pay did attention. Did you read the book? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You did it. Oh, yep. Man, I read, I read through, I know I read, absolutely. That's how I can cr criticize it so well. I, re I read things I criticize too, but yeah. you know, I, um, I, I read all of the, you know, crappy relationship books you know, mm -hmm. before I got came into, you know, pick up an Evo psych and then eventually like rational mail. And those are the things I read all that stuff when mm -hmm. I was in trying to figure out what were know, some other crappy ones that you read. I'm just curious. Oh, uh, men are from Mars. Women are from Venus is, is, is horrifying. Um, and I'll have to go through some of the other titles. Like I think there's stuff by Joel Olstein is hor yeah. horrifying. I've uh, seen Steve a few Har like Steve on, Harvey is horrifying. Yeah, like I've seen a few on the <laughs> Amazon list now in in the dating slash relationship category because my book does well in it. I mean, it's not even in the top five. Um, I mean, it's generally in the top twenty or so usually. But um, I've noticed like these books in the top five and the titles and the authors I've never heard of. But it's like it just looks like woo woo shit. I've thought it's I've often is. thought about doing a breakdown on on like the number one selling book in the relationship category just from you know the perspective of somebody like me that's kind of made his wounds his work and did all the shit and wrote his own book on it. I think that might be fun at some point to do. Maybe we'll do a book club, Paul. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, book <laughs> club where we just tear apart these uh tear it apart. well <laughs> i don't know maybe we'll praise it maybe we'll tear it apart depends on what's that's in it, but... true i i do i do look at things as objectively as possible and i try to you know i try to maintain like an understanding of their audience too i mean yeah. there's a lot of things like our audience tends to be primarily men but you know there's a way to present information too that resonates better with women and so if you're trying to be a little bit more universal they're not they're not going to be so cold hard truth bomb harsh about certain things and i can accept that but when it's just bad advice though that leads to failure that's when we're having a problem I, I can accept the lukewarm way of presenting maybe what would be good advice i don't accept the bad advice that's going to destroy you know, further destroy people's relationships. And um, in, in case in point, so Chapman says, you know, that when you're, you know, you're dating and courting and all that stuff that you're supposed to be paying attention to how she treats others and her, the way she expresses herself to others to try to determine what her love language is. And then you try to match that and all the stuff. Again, you're paying attention to all the wrong things. So instead of paying attention to the signs that she has genuine desire for you and the signs that she's, you know, has that you're her best and that she sees you as an apex alpha and maybe the signs that she's capable of pair bonding, looking at those red flags, looking at those green flags and those things, guys are focused on trying to figure out what her love language is. Well, here's the problem with that too. How she expresses, let's say, love to her mom or, or you know, her friends isn't going to be how she treats a guy she's genuinely into, right? And so, it, it, yeah. Sorry, I was just about to say, I just pulled up the book on Amazon because I wanted to see how it sells. It, it sells really well. Dude, I know. Dude, there's almost 50,000 reviews on it. And yeah. judging by the 
ratio of reviews to sales on mm -hmm. mine. This guy sold a buck ton of these. He made and an they're empire. They're all five star. You know, you empire. know when I first realized that 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 this was bullshit. And in full transparency, uh, I haven't read it, so I don't I don't know what's in the content of the book. I mean, I've gone through the quiz um, many years ago. The time we just did it now, just for jokes, it says over sure. twelve million copies sold. But I mean, the time that I knew that this was bullshit. Um, I'm in a bunch of different Facebook groups and I don't usually participate. I'm just a fly in the wall because I don't want to drop red pill truths on, on people that aren't ready for them. But I like to see what they're dealing with. So in like a, a couples group or, or sorry, like a, a men's group that's that, that's dealing with relationship struggles, there's guys that will come on and they'll be like, you know, my wife hasn't had sex with me in forever. And, you know, she's always nagging me and I'm very stressed out about it. And I don't know what to do. And what do you think, guys? And it's like a good chunk of the feedback that they'll get is we'll find out what her love language is yeah. and then go and serve right. that. Right. Exactly. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh man. Well, and it's no, it should be of no surprise then that only one out of 10 relationships or 13%, according to the study that you showed are successful and happy Correct. Over past the nine, past the eight year mark, you know? And, and even sooner than that, they usually fall apart. But that study was done past the eight, you know, to the eight year mark. Yep. It, it's it's of no surprise long term relationships don't last because they're they're picking all the stuff that sets them up for failure. So if we don't challenge this stuff, you know what I mean? It's just going to continue. It's it's right? it's still the number one selling book in the marriage category. Yep. It Absolutely. The number one selling book. And, and there's beta males that are going to go out there and buy it after they've been doing the dishes and taking the kids to all the extracurriculars and <laughs> right. mopping the floors, like Darren Hardy says, doing all that mm -hmm. shit. And then they're going to go and buy the book and do more of that stuff, thinking that that's going to get them what they want in that marriage. And it's, I mean, it's a tragedy that, that more guys don't understand the difference between genuine desire and fucking indifference, really, which is what women have at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's completely different. Like when she when she has genuine desire for you and she sees you as her apex alpha, mm. the way you do something and, and, and how you do something, she'll respond completely different to that than if she sees you as that guy she settled with, kind of a beta, and the genuine desire really isn't there and it's a negotiated relationship. Her, You, you could do the dishes, okay? Because you know what? You're just going to do the dishes today. Cause you got, she's, she's busy with some stuff, you know, you, 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 whatever, you know what I mean? And you just do them. That's fine. Right. And she's going to be more, she'll look at something like that. Really appreciative. Whereas with a beta guy, she looks at that as his duty. You know what I mean? Well, you're just, you're supposed to do that. It has nothing to do with love language. Mm -hmm. It has to do with how she feels about you, you know? And so guys need to get better at seduction and get better at vetting. Well, first vetting, but also better at seduction and better at maintaining frame and genuine desire in the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's how you have the success, not by setting it up further into a negotiated situation, because that never works. You can't, you can't negotiate desire. No, you know? it's utterly pointless. It leads to uh, compliance and ultimately resentment. Um, yeah. I got some guys in the in the uh, green room waiting to hop on, ask a question. Did you want to cover let's anything else? I got um, Vic back there. So um, let's start with Vic because... Uh, He's, he's right. one of our new bros. What's up, buddy? How you doing? New bros. What's up, Vic? Good. I'm a new one percenter. Yeah, new welcome, man. One percenter. Welcome, Solid welcome, welcome. Man. Biker gang. No, I don't to comment. <laughs> when I was married, I went through this bull crap with my ex-wife and uh, figuring out the whole love language thing, and it, it was kind of pointless, you know. Did so you? I mean, I don't really have a question. I I just popped in. I just wanted to watch you guys and stuff like that. But no, I wanted yeah, to hear I, like these oh, kinds wait. of experiences too. So did you guys? Approach the book on your own. Did you have like a marriage counselor that recommended reading it? Like, how did you? It was, come a, marriage, it was a marriage counselor. We, she yep. actually took it through it and whole whiteboarded everything and really? all that crap. Damn, and wow. uh, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, here I am divorced. So I mean, see how well that. <laughs> so, so, like, what was the outcome after you did all the quizzes and the whiteboard stuff? Like, did you find yourself? Doing like, were you negotiating certain certain parts of the relationship with her? My entire my entire marriage was negotiating for you know whatever, <laughs> and, uh, and and, and it was everything you guys are describing, you know, it's like, oh, honey, look, I cleaned the gutter. Can mm -hmm. I have some now? It's like you know, so there was never yeah. any. If I had discovered all this stuff years ago, maybe I would have saved my marriage, but 
And that would have been right. Would have been such an, uh, what is it? Uh, average frustrated chump. But um, yeah. And that's a real cost here. You know what I mean? Like we, we joke around, we could not rag on this or that, but there's a real serious cost to promoting this crap. And the and we're listening to it right now because I, I don't know if it was you know good for you to stay married to her or not, right? We don't know that. But the reality is by following that advice and going down that road, it was further nails in the coffin and the demise of the relationship is what that amounted to. Instead of going in a direction of kind of pulling back, getting your alpha self back, getting your identity back as a man, and then moving towards you know, building desire, seduction, and frame. And if that's not a possible thing, then maybe the relationship needs to end. But at least you know when it, you end it, you've done everything you needed to do. That would have been a way to to approach it. But yet you're going to a professional and they give you all of this crap. And all it is is to be further prisoner in a relationship to somebody who doesn't really like you all that much. You know what I mean? And Yeah, it's just crazy. It I mean, you know, you try and you try and you try when you're in a when you're in a marriage, yeah, you know. But it, of course, it, it was just another step in delaying the, the inevitable, you know, and right. it just dragged it up. What, what, more, um, so. what was it that brought you to my channel and my men's community, Vic? Uh, well, it was it was your videos, and uh, I got I moved out um, a year ago, May, and uh, I got divorced in July. And I've been doing a lot of, you know, reading uh, Roll Tomasi's books. Uh, I, I recently got your book. I'm about two thirds of the way through it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Watching a lot of like uh, Dan Bacon's videos and, and uh, his audio stuff. And I've been just trying to figure out, you know, what, I don't know, how to be uh, the man I'm supposed to be. And uh, I really like the idea of a, uh, a community of like-minded men and uh, I, Within a couple of days, I immediately knew I got my money's worth for joining your group because I, I think you saw the post that I, yeah. that I put up and seeing myself. And within like 24 hours, I had like 100 very supportive comments. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. It was, it was really great. And I'm talking to people behind the scenes on DM. And uh, it's just really, really good to connect with other men and, um, who have yeah. been through the same things. And they're working on you know, their purpose and being their best selves mm -hmm. and, uh, and all that. So it, it, that, that's why I joined. It's really great so, stuff. so, um, after the show, I do a, a zoo call for the community. Um, all the links on the, on the private Facebook page. So click that and join. Cause there was something that I commented on your post about that. I want to talk to you privately on that. Yeah, zoo. For sure. So if you have time, yeah. if you're around, hop on, cause I'll be on for like another 60 minutes afterwards. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for, um, Thanks for sharing, you know, sharing the experience. Cause I think it, 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 like, you know, when guys are sitting around, like I did the marriage counseling thing too. And I didn't like fortunately get the recommendation to do the love language thing. Cause we had a, a, a guy counselor, like I insisted on having a dude, I wasn't going to go through all like the field stuff. Um, but you know, it's unfortunate when guys are going through the process of, of like trying to unfuck themselves and, and not like untie the knot that somebody's like, well, you were doing all this chore play. So now take this quiz and it looks like you have to do these things instead, which will solve everything and everything right. should be tickety boo. And it, it just doesn't work out that way for most guys, but still the number it's, one best selling book in the marriage category. It, it, it's <laughs> bad. It really <laughs> screws people up, man. It really does. It screws up and, the and chicks too. It does. Yeah. Well, it, well, it sets their expectations to, you yeah. know, function with something that's supposed to be rational based on a quiz. And that's not how women work. No, they, they yeah. feel bad. They're like, he's doing all this stuff and I don't feel it. And I don't know why, you know what I mean? This is like what happens when he's doing all this stuff. And I'm still looking at Kevin, the VP of the sales team. Yeah. Why, 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 why am I, I doing want, this? They don't understand. Why do I want <laughs> right. well, exactly. guys, I've, got a, I've got a friend, I got a good friend who I've known for about 15 years. And, and for most of that time, I, I always considered him just naturally alpha. He was like an alpha. He was a man's man, you know, a little gruff, you know, but he got married. And over the years, he, he's, he softened considerably, trying to like be nice to his wife and doing, you know, what seems to make sense intuitively and catering to her and all this stuff. And recently she just like started going off the reservation and getting like inches from his face and cursing him out and screaming at him. And I handed him uh, the rational mail and he called me after reading just the book is going to change my life. I can already tell. 
And he started employing some of the things in that book and, 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 you know, like, Hey, you don't get to talk to me that way. And just drawing boundaries. And all of a sudden she's turning around. Yeah. Even though she complained about his alphaness, that's she really what she wanted. Man. She Women was don't. attracted to a man and she wanted yeah. that guy back. Women don't know yeah. when they put guys through the betaization through a thousand concessions process. Like they don't intend to try to turn a guy that they admire, love and respect into a beta male. But through a sequence of consecutive shit tests that men start to fail more often than passing because, you know, they've been told happy wife, happy life. Just put her up on a pedestal, become less so she could become more, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, whether it's three years, five years, 10 years down the road, all of a sudden, you know, he's he's been turned from this pet that she was proud of that she would proudly present to her family at Christmas or at Thanksgiving and be like, hey, everybody, this is Vic. The entrepreneur that's had three exits and has, you know, a multi-million dollar business and the cool guy with that whatever car out front, blah, blah, blah. And then 10 years down the road, you know, she's just like, well, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I think I want to get a divorce, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So, hey, thanks for putting me on, man. Yeah. I love you guys too. Thanks, Vic. We'll see you later. Um, Mo, if you're ready to hop on, I can pull you in. And uh, let's grab your stream. There we go. We're shaking, man. You're muted. You got to unmute yourself. Muted. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. What's up? Amazing content, Mr. Richard. It would probably get me this on by my family, but uh, it would be worth it. Okay. What's the question, bro? So I have two questions. One is very short. Uh, which one has the, the highest ROI? Is it paying for a prostitute or investing in yourself and banks buying suits and cars and these resources okay so let's start with number one because okay. what you're talking about is transactional sex and i had this question on a stereo cast i did yesterday with ryan um there's there's validational sex and then there's transactional sex validational sex is when women enthusiastically want to be with you they don't charge you any money they will come over at three o'clock in the morning, drive two hours to get to your house on a work night, wake you up with a BJ and give you the best sex you've ever had. That's validational sex. Okay. Transactional sex is do the dishes, mop the floors and cut the grass before you get any of the, you know, cookie from nookie sort of thing or whatever, or nookie, cookie from nookie, but whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like that's like, that's transactional. Also is transactional escorts, prostitutes. Buying a sex doll is even transactional because you're buying the damn thing. I mean, you're paying for it. So, I mean, you pay at the end of the day with women. It's just how are you going to pay? Is is it is it paid with your validation and your attention or is it paid with this? I understand. You understand? Okay. I'm going to add to this a little bit. Why don't we, because women are such so much trouble, right? Why don't we just pay for hookers, right? Why, why don't we do that? Or just, or just buy like some really high tech, you know, dick machine, right? They just plug in and just sucks all your juice out and you got like surround sound porn. Like, why don't we just do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why not? And the, 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 the reason we don't do that is because what we actually want is genuine desire from a chick. Right. We want the chick to actually want us. That is our primal drive. If in primal times, if the chick actually wanted us, then she wasn't cucking us and we were taking care of someone else's baby or mm -hmm. killing our baby because she didn't want to be with us anymore. And she wanted the more alpha guy from the other tribe. So our drive for sex is not just the release. It is the genuine desire. So going down the road, even like pornography, this is why guys porn uh, tastes get weirder and weirder the longer they do it because they're trying to get you know, that genuine desire, but of course they're not really getting that from a screen. They're just getting the images and all that stuff. So now the combat, they have to get like this combination lock of porn in order to really get off. Like I need an Asian and a black chick and she does this and the other does this. And then the other one gets choked. And now that's my formula. Well, yeah, it gets weirder and weirder because there's no genuine desire that's actually happening. And that's what the actual drive is. So do the things that will get you the genuine desire. Work on your SMV, work on your game, your communication with women. That's what's going to get you what you want, not paying for some hooker. You know what I mean? All right, gentlemen. And this brings me to my second point. You, you're speaking about love languages. I uh, consider also parenting is a love language. Like I had this experience with my mother. 
I just I just babbled like why uh she was pushing me into relationship and independence. I'm like, why should I consider marriage? And she's like very surprised, like uh, no, it's for someone to take care of you, someone for this, someone for that. I'm like Okay. I said everything. Let me just stop you there for a sec because you said someone to take care of you. This is yeah. what mothers are trying to do. They're they're trying to replace themselves with a younger, more fertile version of themselves that can hopefully do what they do. But what mm. mothers fail to realize is that women today don't do that anymore. Right? That's what they're I not, said. Like they don't want to baby you. They don't want to take care of you. They want to take care of themselves and have you take care of yourself. And she also wants access to your shit too. Yeah. So, that's, plus that's not even really what they wanted to do back then anyway. No, no, true, no, yeah. no romance, like no Romeo and Juliet story going back from hundreds of years has ever been a chick who just dutifully does stuff for her man. And, uh, you know, and then there's no sex other than every three months. Like that's never the story, right? It's always some thing where she's supposed to marry this guy, but she's, her real true love is over here. You know what I mean? It's always this conflict mm. where she has to have the true love, the genuine desire for this guy over here. But, you know, she's being forced to marry over here and she has to run away with him. Like, you know what I mean? That That's the things that they want that genuine desire to. Marriage isn't a buffer. Yeah. Marriage exactly. isn't a buffer like it might have been, you know, back in. 70 50 years ago 80 years ago it might have been a buffer back then like you got married you stayed married like all that you had to do like all that your grandfather had to do was come back from the war he could have had a job at a toothpaste factory screwing on the caps on toothpaste as long as he had enough money to pay for the house the food the family station wagon the dog and the kids and school and university and, and get his watch on his retirement that was enough that was enough like marriage was a buffer back then today that's not enough anymore that doesn't even come close to being enough for today's women. Mm. I agree, but I read your chapter on how to not give an F. And right. I find it very hard to stop caring about what others think. Like, Why? Uh, I don't know if you uh, read this Chris Dias situation. He basically got hooked up with chicks who were younger, but at a legal age. Then all the social media kept going at him, so he got in a little bit of trouble. And also, mm -hmm. navigating the workplace, like a dude in my mid-20s, it's kind of hard just reading about the red pill and trying to apply it in the workforce, but also not to be so, uh, you know, uh, HR department, the corporate S and all this stuff. It's kind well, of rubbing on my mind. Okay. Okay, let me just guide you here so we can get to the uh, question on this part of giving fewer Fs. So the, the, the chapter that you're referencing, I'm talking about managing your energy as a valuable resource, a.k.a. your fucks, and only dispensing them for things that are truly fuckworthy. So what's your question around that? Like you're having a hard time valuing it as a resource, or what is it exactly? I'm having a hard time not stop worrying about others or what they will think or what ramifications i'm gonna get later how old are you mo i'm pushing 24. you're 24. where do you live again sweden sweden okay so um at some point you've got to realize that nobody gives a fuck about you women society the government your employer you are, like men are disposable generally speaking and women are protected because they have more value than men on the sexual marketplace you know, sperm is cheap, eggs are expensive, blah, blah, blah. I can go right down the list. So you're spending, like you're, you're not going to be able to manage your Fs and dispense them for things that are worthy of said Fs if you don't value your Fs. So if you have gas in the tank of your car and it's half full and you got to get somewhere that's probably going to use that amount of gas, you're not going to be smashing the pedal to the floor at every single light and breaking abruptly and flying around corners and going faster than you should because you're going to get shitty mileage, right? So you're going to value the gas that's in your tank and you're going to use it appropriately in accordance with the distance you have to travel and the way that you have to drive the car, right? So, <clears throat> I mean, I did this the other night. It was cold as fucking hell out and I, and I didn't feel like pumping gas out into the car. 
it said that I had like 80 kilometers range and the distance that I had to travel to get home was something like, I don't know, 50 kilometers. I wasn't smashing the gas. I valued the gas that I had in the tank as a resource. So I used it in a fashion that was in accordance with me looking at the value that was in the gas tank sort of thing. So you have to stop caring about maybe the guy that's tailgating you. You have to stop caring about, you know, the guy that maybe needs to, you know, pull in and merge because you're traveling at a certain speed because you don't feel like getting out of the car and freezing your balls off, putting gas in the car at like minus 25 and you don't have gloves or a hat in your car or anything like that. I don't care, right? Like when you see these things as a limited resource that you can only dispense on things that are important, then you will start to treat it that way. But you're not seeing as a limited as a limited resource, which is probably why you keep you know caring too much about everybody else and, and what they think of things. Does that make sense? I, I think it's just playing with my mind that I saw your tweet that got everybody talking about these six points that a woman should do, mm -hmm. and I saw the fallback. I'm like, if I did the same thing, or or I know you own your own business, so you can afford to not care about them. Yeah. But what if a, a younger person or a person just starting his life? Uh, like, listen, you know, whenever I put out a uh, tweet like that, and for th those of you that don't know what it is that are watching that, that haven't seen me use this, I mean, if you go out onto Twitter right now and you say something like, ladies, here's the five things you need to do to keep a man. Uh, know what he likes in bed, know how to feed him, look feminine, keep your hair, you know, keep your hair and makeup nice. Um, don't be a nag, you know, like standard, like standard stuff, like, you know, a grandmother would have told a granddaughter like 50 years ago, just conventional stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. Right. Well, Twitter loses its fucking mind when you do that. There was probably about 20 articles that was written on me. I was on different news stations around the world, different parts of the world, all over the world. And people were basically like, look at this incel, you know, telling women what to do. How dare he and blah, 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 pointing and sputtering. I laugh at it. There's guys out there like Mo right now who might look at that and be like, oh my God, all these people have opinions of me that I don't know what to do with and they don't like me. So how do I, you have to get yourself to, to the point of Zen, not giving a fuck. And I'm at the point of Zen, not giving a fuck. Part of, part of which, because I'm older than you are, and I'm also a lot more anti-fragile than you, like nobody can fire me, right? Like I, I had people that would come in and be like, oh, are you Richard Cooper of this company? And blah, blah. It's like, yeah, bitch, I'm the CEO. So go complain if you want. Nobody's firing me. Oh, you're a customer. You don't like it? Fuck off. I don't care, right? That's my opinion. If you have a problem with my opinion, then get lost. You know, it's as simple as that. That's just the way that you can get to when you start recognizing that your energy is valuable and you only should dispense your energy, AKA your Fs for things that are truly F worthy. Do I care of the opinion of all these morons that are writing articles and putting me on TV, calling me names? I don't, you know what happened? Guys like you saw it and were like, that's interesting. Let me see who this guy is. And then you found my material. So they're actually doing me a favor by marketing to the world for free because I make a list of five things that, that women should do to keep men happy. And they're right? outraged. Oh, I add right. to this. So a big thing too, I call it um, good chimpanzee, right? And I call it uh, useful or valuable chimpanzee. So women and less valuable or beta males, okay, they're concerned about being good chimpanzees. They want to know what the society around them, you know, how they accept them, how they feel about them. Um, this has to do with evolutionary drives. You know, women were able to survive based on their in their social status and standing in the tribe, or had to do with the social opinions of people around them. Mm -hmm. When people perceive them as being a good mom, a good person, or whatever, and this is the root of like why, in an argument, for example, women don't like to admit that they're wrong or admit fault. It's not because, and they do sometimes, but they they're handicapped in doing that if they think it's going to make them be a bad chimpanzee you know what i mean now guys though alpha guys they just want to be they want to provide value to the tribe so when they're providing value they can be the asshole they don't care you know what i mean they'll they're the the guy who defends the tribe and kicks everyone's ass and is kind of an asshole though back in the rear nobody's kicking that guy out in fact they're praising him you know what I mean? The best hunter, if he's kind of a dick, nobody cares. They're praising him for what he does. 
So Rich is, you know, to use that uh, analogy, he was a he's a valuable chimpanzee, right? What he does in the world and the impact in the world is huge. So that's why he doesn't give a fuck. You see what I'm saying? When you are know that you're bringing a lot of value to yourself, to your tribe, to people around you, and to the world, making that dent. Doesn't matter what people think. Matters a lot less. You care a lot less about that. Now you're a young guy, I can tell. So you're probably at the lowest point of value that you're going to be in your life. When you hit about 35 years old, you keep working on your shit, not worrying about what other people think. Your value that you bring is going to be a lot higher. And then you're not going to care so much about what other people are thinking. So a real practical thing or practical exercise is to start doing things that are going to provide value to yourself, to others, or build your value. Once you start building that value, it's easier to not give it an F about what other people think. You know what so I mean? So what you mean is that I have to act like I'm part of them, like the male feminist beta beta buff until no, I no, need that no, point. No, that's no, not that. no, no, that's, that's not what not I said. It. Let me just add to <laughs> that. No, that's not what Paul said. So no. When you're when you're looking for the validation of other people, that's a feminine behavior. That's a female behavior. Um, right. It's an evolved piece of their firmware for survival. Because I mean, part of the reason why women today are 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 so drunk on attention on social media, like on Instagram or TikTok, doing these dances and they're dancing around like fucking monkeys, trying to get everybody's validation and likes and comments, is because it's hardwired into their firmware. From millions of years ago because if they didn't have the approval of the tribe what would happen they'd get thrown out can they survive on their own the chances of them doing it are not as high as a guy that has the ability to you know do the things that guys can do because they're stronger and they're more capable for a gathering and often women would have children so that's also a disadvantage for them to you know be carrying that around if they're thrown out of the tribe so when you're caring too much about what other people think that's more on the feminine sort of the behavior scale it's not masculine it's not alpha it's a beta behavior so when you find yourself like oh well that person thinks that you know this of me just understand that that you're thinking at a vibrational level that's not an alpha male's level right let's say a workplace that is very uh progressive and very beta like in feminine in their approach should i just go under the radar and be like Okay, I'll be like. Well, you have. This well, you have two choices. Sorry, you've got three choices: comply, shut the fuck up, and mind your own business, and just carry on knowing what you know and not offering your opinion because it's kind of pointless. Or quit and go work somewhere else. That's really it. Duly noted. Yeah. Thank All right, Mo. Thank you. You got it, bro. See you later, uh, Jack. I'm going to pull you in in just one second. Let me just hit these super chats here real quick. Um, Jeff's got a good question. He was uh, he does. typing I away in the see, yeah. yeah, he's typing away. It's uh, sort of uh, really rough. Zach says, uh, 699 Super Chat says, Truth, great discussion topic. Was brainwashed with this BS in my last LTR. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. Um, let's see what else. There was one or two more here. Zen, 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 Zen. Zen, this is the best advice I've heard all year. Thanks. You're very welcome, and thank you for the super chat. Nice. And Mexican Iron Man says, I accidentally found Rich through a hater article. Awesome. Uh, found the website, subbed, bought the book, and now I'm a monthly YouTube member. <laughs> Value. See, this This is my it point. Is. Like when people are like, don't you care what these people say about you when they're doing TV shows and articles? No, I don't because they're giving me free advertising. Exhibit A, this guy came to me as a result of them talking shit about me. It's beautiful. Yeah. I should That's do those amazing. posts more often. Um, Jack, what's up, bro? Um, do you want to kind of explain your question? Cause I don't really want to read it, but I saw it here, you know, kind of framed. So go ahead. Well, um, both my wife, my, I'm a, a born again believer, been one for like 35 years. My, my wife's pretty new. And when we first started dating, we met online and I had like the upper hand. She was really attracted to me. But then once we met in person, I, turned to a beta instead of an alpha male and since then she felt has felt that she's never felt sexual attraction to me and i'm 20 years older than her and she's married me because she feels i uh check all the boxes except for the sexual passion mm -hmm. and i knew there i mean i read all the books men are from mars women are from venus i gary chapman's mm -hmm. book i read them all went through all these books with her while we were dating 
And somehow it backfired on me instead of building passion. She's feels that she's never going to have it with me. Even so, though she finds me attractive. So how long have you guys been married? Uh, two years. How, how old is she and how old are you? I'm 58 and she's 37. And where'd you meet her? Okay. It was a dating uh, app, you said? A Christian online dating service. Okay. And where do you live? In California. Riverside. Okay. Okay. All right. So the so the question is, how do I regain the edge back in yeah. our Yeah. Can I jump on all over this? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, start. All right, man. So first off, um, the, the Christian paradigm for a lot of women who are 37 years old, understand that they don't understand their primal drives. You know what I mean? Speaking from a Christian perspective, these are things that, you know, God gave us or settled us with. All right. However, they don't understand those things. And for her, she wants to be a good chimp and she wants to marry the guy who checks a bunch of blocks. All right. And she's not necessarily marrying the guy or going for the guy or even looking at the idea of, sexual desire and wanting that desire for this person because to do that would make her a bad chimp in the Christian circles, right? If she's like, man, I really want to, you know, make sure that I'm getting banged out by the right guy here. I'm like what? <laughs> like, you know, get out of the church. You know, of course, of course, but, but her circles, right? Get out of the church, right? So she wasn't selecting based on that drive, but that drive was always in forever present. She ignored it, put it on the back burner, married you for a bunch of other reasons. So the question is, can you regain or gain rather, um, you know, some sexual attraction from her where she sees you as your best and you have the, you know, the ability to move on and be in a healthy relationship or is this something you're going to have to exit? That's the question. So your solution is to first, you got to stop giving a shit about her for a minute. All right. That's your, I know it sounds counterintuitive. But that's really what it is because an alpha guy is going to be on his own mental point of origin. If a chick tells me she has zero, she's not sexually attracted to me. My give a fuck about her now turns to like to this. Okay. I'm literally like this. I care about her as a human being because she's a human being. And that's as far as that goes, you know, I, I can be amicable in a living situation or whatever, but I'm not going to put my time, love and attention into her. Because I'm not going to do that and waste my time with somebody who feels like that about me. Now, here's what that does. It flips the dynamic around, okay? If you understand hypergamy, her genetic drive is to marry upward, to date upward, and to see you. She needs to see you as better than her. Right now, though, she doesn't see it that way, and I don't even think you see it that way. Because you're going, man, she's 21 years younger than me. She's this hot 21 year younger than me, chick. Uh, I don't know, man. She's my world. She's be she's better than me, right? That's how you're seeing her. And that's how you push. You put her on that pedestal. But guess what, man? The frame is yours, whether you like it or not. And whether you're going to steer the relationship in the right or wrong direction. So when you put her on that pedestal and you behave as if she's better <laughs> than you, guess what she thinks? She thinks she's better than you. And so then guess what it do that does to her desire and her attraction? It plummets. It goes in the toilet. If it was there before, it's in the toilet now. So the only way you're going to give it, get it back is to instill the idea. And you can't do this through anger, frustration, or telling her how it is. Instill the idea that, no, you're actually better than she is. You're the better genetic option. That's the fundamentally the, the thing that has to happen or attraction will never start happening. And so that's going to happen by starting off uh, working on these three things. Okay. One is your activities outside of the relationship. So your purpose, your vocation. And if you don't have any hobbies or anything like that, start getting some, start spending a lot of time outside of the relationship and finding enjoyment outside of the relationship because you're the source of enjoyment and awesomeness. And she needs to get on your level. That needs to be the framework, right? Versus you're coming to her and let's build this together. Like, no, this is a very Christian thing, by the way. You lead the relationship. So that's that's what this is, right? You're going in the direction. She can be a part, jump on the party bus with you and have an awesome time. Or she can sit on the curb and you're just going to go anyway. And I'll see you later, I guess, you know? That's the framework, all right? Now, when I say go anyway, I'm not saying you're divorcing immediately because she didn't like you today, all right? But I'm saying just circumstantially, right? Okay, going to the party. I'll circle back around, see if you're still on the curb, if you want to get on or not, that kind of a thing, all right? Now, so 
working on your activities outside, one of those things needs to be your sexual market value, the things that make you attractive. All right. We have a, a saying and there was saying on, on the teams and special forces group saying in the infantry is always look cool. All right. That <laughs> is a joke. You'd say, man, you always got to look cool. Always look cool. But it is another way of saying like, look good, feel good. Right. And so, you know, you, you work on your SMV and you work on the th aspects about yourself that are going to make you more attractive. All right. You're going to feel better about yourself right now. You feel like crap because the girl that you are like in love with doesn't want to sleep with you. And that makes you feel like low value, like crap and like unattractive. But guess what? You're not unattractive. I mean, Rich and I will bang it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, you're, but you're not unattractive. No, but you're not unattractive. You know what I mean? You're not that guy. Other women will find you attractive. But you got to grab your SMV by the balls and you got to work on it. There's a reason why I'm I'm 43. Rich is a little older than me. You're a little older than me. Okay? But we're working on our bodies. We're going to the gym. We're taking on hobbies and we're doing stuff. We're paying attention to what we wear. We're paying attention to how we show up. We're paying attention to our behavior, how we act. Not for anybody else, but for us. You know what? When I look cool, so to speak, and I'm in an operational environment, whether it's, you know, you're about to go do some stuff that involves shooting, okay, you, you also feel like you can accomplish that mission. And that's the thing, right? Viking culture knew this. Samurai culture knew this. Same with you, man. If, you're, if, you, if you feel like you're just like crap and you're not showing up and being attractive and, you know, then it's hard to really show up and be that alpha guy. You know, so this is part of getting your alpha back. And then the third thing is once you're focused on yourself and your point of origin and your purpose, and she is really just a person that, hey, I care about you as a human being, but I don't care about you as a partner if you don't find me attractive. We're just buddies that live in this house. I don't give a crap. I'm go have an awesome time. Let me know when you change your mind. You take that framework. She sees you start improve. Like she, she'll start seeing you differently. Okay. And then once you start seeing you differently, circle back around and now it's seduction. All right. Now that's, that is a long discussion that we don't have. Even if we spent the next 30 minutes on it, it wouldn't get to, you know, it wouldn't crack into it, but seduction then is the key. It's how to seduce this person. Now that she's start starting to see you as better because you're on your mental point of origin. She now starts to see you as that better sexual option. All right. How do I seduce her? But that's, that's, that's the part of it. We start moving and circling back around to that piece. It's not love language stuff. It's not placating stuff. It's this formula. All right. So far that's a start anyway. Now the other part is though, you have to understand though, right. That it may just not work out and you got to be okay with that. And here's the good news about this. All right. If it doesn't work out, the next girl's better. Now you have to figure out your Christian beliefs on this sort of, sort of thing. I can't do that for you. All right. Um, but the next girl's better. Here's why that is everything you learned and everything you've done up to this point with this chick, she didn't work out. If you improved and you made yourself better, what's available to you now is better women. All right. Better quality, better looking, all that kind of stuff. Because I'm looking at you, I'm not seeing a guy who's not, you know, capable of being attractive to women in her age category. All right. If I'm being objective. So, so that's the thing. Like you have to be okay with this not working out. You, you, you want to put your, your efforts into it to make it work out, but you don't want to settle with someone who just doesn't find you attractive. That's not even, that's not even biblical either, is it? So, yeah, that's bullshit. I um, yeah. Jack, I got a question for you. Jack, sorry, man. I got a question for you. I yeah. wanted to ask while um, you know Paul was talking. The the um, do you know why why younger women date older guys? Like, do you understand what it is that that they're looking for? She's definitely hyper hypergamous. I know that they all are. Yeah, but I mean, like the biggest problem that that most guys make when they start dating a younger chick is they try to they don't invite them into their world, right? Like. If I'm going to date a chick that's 20 years younger than me, I don't I don't give a shit about her world. I don't I don't care about what what you know what's going on on uh, TikTok that day. None of that nonsense. If she's going to date me, she's dating me because she's a beauty object and because I'm a success object, and she's invited into my world. And she only gets to stay there so long as she's a compliment to my life and not the focus. Um, 
I saw there in the private chat, you said something about having a, uh, a PhD and something about golf. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got a lot of value. I mean, I, I'm too handicapped in golf. I have a PhD and I have a lot of like, I played the game with women too. And, I, and unfortunately with my wife, I mean, because I wanted to do things right. In fact, we didn't have sex before marriage and did a lot of things that most Christians would want, you know, find. Was she a virgin when you met her? No, we definitely have a, a big sexual history background and we both, I mean, we're open about that. And, mm -hmm. and it just where I didn't play any games with her. And, and when I had the upper hand, I, I showed all my cards. Yeah. Like the, like, you know, being a PhD and being a strong earner is, is good. Uh, she's not going to care about your golf handicap. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> like, she could care less. She yeah, Tiger truthfully. Woods or something. Yeah, like unless you're Tiger Woods, but um, but at the end of the day, have... like she she's really looking to enter your world, and at the end of the day, she really does want to be a compliment to a man's life, but she's only going to allow her, allow herself to compliment a man in his life if she sees him as the best that she can do. Right. I mean, if she sees you every single, like if she gets up every single morning and say, this guy, Jack Lopez with the handicap and the PhD on the wall, framed in mahogany and all that kind of shit is the best that I can do. I am so enthusiastic about him. I'm going to wake him up with a Hummer sort of thing. Like that's a good sign. If a Christian, a Christian Hummer, Rich, Come a Christian on, Hummer, yeah, sorry, sure. but it's, it's still a Hummer <laughs> nonetheless. You're married, you know, it's totally, it's totally fine. As far as I understand, I don't know, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, no, but like, you're 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 coming at this from the angle of what do I like your question alone there in the chat where did it go uh Jack Merritt how do I regain the edge back you never had right. the edge you never yeah. had the edge that's what I'm trying to yeah you you might have had more of an edge than what you do right now and you've probably gone through a little bit of the process of betaization through a thousand concessions although you haven't been married too too long so maybe it's a hundred concessions or 300 concessions but you've started to go through the process and what Paul's basically saying is you have to stop caring what she thinks of you you have to see yourself as the fucking prize start acting like the fucking prize and doing shit that pleases you and if she wants to come along for the ride and compliment your life great if she doesn't, doors over there. It's fuck me or fuck you. It's as simple as that. Now, that's the way that Ryan Stone would put it. And he's got a great channel. He talks about relationships, you know, dynamics and especially in LTRs and marriages. So look at his stuff. I'd also suggest booking a call with Paul because he's way cheaper than I am, but he's very good. So if you get a chance, you know, you, you know where to find him off of YouTube, right? Yeah. Paul, Paul, what again? Paul. It's an apex mindset. Okay. So I screwed oh, up, okay, everybody. Cool. Everyone who knows me well enough will know that I, how technologically idiotic I am. So right now my channel just says Paul on it because I changed on Google. It said Apex Mindset uh, uh, for my email. So I just changed it to Paul because I was doing some stuff with the military and I didn't want to say Apex Mindset. And now my stupid channel automatically changed to Paul. Don't worry, though. It'll be but back you, to Apex Mindset after this call. Yeah, <laughs> so but if you click Apex like Mindset, like Paul in the right, title right, of the wife, video, then that will take you to his channel. Time. What's yeah. that? Yeah. My wife watches your channel all the time, Rich, and uh, loves it. Well, when when women watch my channel, it's because it's for one of two reasons. They either want to bang me. They Sorry, three reasons. They either want to bang me, they hate me, or they want to be a fly on the wall and, and see what men are talking about so that, so that they can understand the dynamics better. Right. She's probably coming at it from the perspective of how do I understand relationship dynamics? You need to become the alpha male in that relationship. I don't care what it is you want to call it, what, if you don't like the term alpha, but you need to be viewed by her as her apex male. She needs to look at you as her best possible option. And when she's at that point, you will be woke up in the morning with a Christian Hummer. Because she wants it. And you know what? The other thing is, man, she wants to see you like that. She, she can't. Uh, she probably probably i mean i don't know the full story but most of the time if she wasn't just like gold digger girl or whatever okay if, if it wasn't the scenario by the sounds of it how you guys met she's not a christian mingle because she's looking for a dude you know to to just pay for her stuff so she can bang the pool boy right so she had a set of values behind her she wants to have this burning desire for you and she doesn't and she's confused about that because they don't understand what makes them desire one person over another 
without any education on the topic anyway. And what the society tells them is not correct, you know? And so her circle said that if you checked all of these Christian blocks, that she would just have this magical desire for you. Like, you know, the Holy Spirit would come in and then say, you're going to want to have this desire for him. It's just not how it works, though, unfortunately. You know, so when you start executing these other things, dude, she wants it. She wants to have that with you. She just can't figure it out. You know, that's why she's watching Rich's channel. Yeah. I mean, maybe she wants to bang Rich, but who doesn't, you know, but I don't know that that's it, though. I think she's watching him, though, because she wants to figure this out. Why don't I feel the way I should feel? You know what I mean? That's kind of where, where they're coming from. They're trying to figure it out because they can't figure it out. You know what I mean? Thanks, All right, Jack, you got some work you got to do. I got to I got to move on to some other stuff and I got to catch up with some super chats, but I hope that helped. Um, you might also want to read Rolo's book on Red Pill plus religion, his uh, fourth its fourth book now. You might want to check yeah, that out too. Okay. Cool. cool. All right, brother. Thanks, man. Um, let me get – so sorry, Lucas. Uh, I totally skipped over your super chat. It was uh, unintentional. But he said, how long should I let a girl to establish if she has genuine desire when spending time together letting her taste my vibe lifestyle? I, okay, um, read my book because I because I cover this in different areas of the book. But you want to establish it early on, like even yeah. as early on as setting up the first date. And I'll give you a really good example and way to do it. If she lives thirty minutes away from me, and we're gonna meet somewhere to grab a drink or a coffee or some shit like that, the closer I go to her front door, the less desire she has for me. The closer she comes to my front door, like if I can get her to, to drive 30 minutes right to my house at the bottom of my building and have a coffee in the Starbucks in the bottom of my building sort of thing, let's say I live downtown in a condo, then she has genuine burning desire. If if she's willing to come all the way to my place, park her car and come up the elevator and, and, and get it on in the first date before anything happens, that is genuine burning desire. The sooner that you can establish it, the better off that you're going to be. The, the later that it that, that it happens, the longer that you're waiting for obvious signs, and it should be like taking a frying pan to the forehead, the shittier it's going to be, the more negotiated it's going to be. He wants to hear from you too, Paul, Paul by the way, so if you can chime yeah, in as well. Yeah, yeah, So frame, okay, so frame starts from the beginning, as, uh, as Rich said. And so you give her a taste based on – what she sees right like on your instagram or your facebook page or whatever let's say it's a dating app thing or whatever your pictures that you have up there right how you set up the date from the very get-go it's what i call programming in the frame you know say in the in this in the four steps of maintaining impeccable frame in a relationship whether that's casual or ltr first thing is programming so what programming is is you're letting her see the world through your subjective lens instead of her own, which is based on society, past experiences, all that other stuff, right? You're bringing her into your frame, meaning the way she subjectively sees the world, including how she sees you, is presented and starts to transform into <clears throat> the way that you see it. And the way that would serve you and her in this in a relationship together, whether it's casual or more than that, right? And so this starts off with your game, how you interact, how you talk with her, you know, the topics that you have, so on and so forth. And yeah, you give her a snapshot of your lifestyle. This is parts of who you are, but you always, you know, you're not there to qualify to her, right? You're not we're, we're not trying to show your lifestyle to her and show all this stuff in order to win her over. That's not how it works. What you're doing is you're spending time with her and as she earns more of your time and effort, those doors open up into your world, you know? What Rich is talking about having her arrive to your place, for example, she's earning time with you. She's putting in effort in order to see you. And by putting in effort, that's what creates attraction and desire too. That's what makes somebody want something when they invest. And so you're creating that investment. So present the world that she can have, but only, you know, in slivers, you should be spending more time really learning about her to see if she's even qualified to be in your world. Right. But have her invest in you. And as she invests, she gets and, and does well, and she qualifies to you and things are going well, then she gets more and more of, of that, you know, of, of your world, so to speak. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, let's get another super chat here. So Chris Gray, just uh donation. Thanks, bro. And Ryan J says, just, just subscribe. Keep up the good work. I'm curious how you feel about Corey Wayne's relationship and pickup principles. Are you for or against? Well, mm. I'm more for it than the five love languages. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> I, I did listen to his 3% man book. If I'm being honest, I, uh, I mean, I don't have a lot of good things to say about it. It's more like, you know, being in the top 30%, not the top 3%. Um, <laughs> so it's it's better than the five love, love languages. Uh, I can tell you it's nowhere near as useful as what's in my book. Um, he's more kind of like a, a purple pill kind of guy. I don't really like the pill colors and stuff, but he's 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 kind of like on the fence with stuff like this. What, what do you think, Paul? Well, okay, so Corey Wayne... I came across him early. I really liked some of his stuff early on when it came to the initial advice, like not over texting, like the yeah. initial stuff, you know, when it comes down to like getting a girl to go out with you, the fundamental, day, right? basics. The fundamental stuff. Now here's yeah. the thing. He got the fundamental stuff. His program is almost taken directly from a guy named Dr. Love who had a show and had a program in the late nineties early 2000s he was a pickup guy and then david d'angelo there's a lot of stuff that i recognize from that guy in his his work okay and it's not a slam on him per se this is just where he got his stuff okay now what he did that was good was he brought pickup and what was kept secret kind of in the pickup community to kind of the masses he you know there used to be this idea in the early pickup days that well, we don't want everybody to know our tricks because then all, all the guys are going to do it and then all the girls are going to become wise to it and then we have to come up with new tricks so mystery methods some of the stuff for a while were kind of kept in like these enclosed little circles and you had to pay for a coat a, a, a course or get new community to get this pickup advice right and then you had to be like a pickup artist and wear funny hats all right, so Corey Wayne took the stuff, he hit YouTube with it and was like, hey, this is some information that dudes can use and you know, men and women can use in order to have better, you know, dates, better relationships. So I give him the credit there. That was a really good thing that he had done there, and he developed the following on that. But he does fall short, though, in my opinion, on, on a lot of things. Um, his he he's not somebody you want to follow when it comes to maintaining frame or setting boundaries. So or when it like, me, you know, like some of the advice is just down, downright crap. It's like actually really thing, bad. Yeah. yeah. Like one of the things that he said one time was, uh, somebody was asking about single moms or like dating a woman with kids. And he's like, you know, well, it could be a beautiful thing. And I was like, Oh fuck, here we go. This guy's given like, he's, he's one of the guys telling dudes to like wife up these, these train wrecks. Anyway, let's move yeah. on. I, I don't want to spend too much time on him. Um, I have. Oh, another superhero Hold on real quick. Uh, I see 239 alphas in the chat. Other 600 must be lazy betas. Do the work. Smash the like button. The Mississippi, <laughs> the Mississippi Club, he's there for me. Thank you, brother. Yeah, Smash that like button. The like it, button. You know, 600 people. Algorithms. Should be 600 likes. All right, Brent, <laughs> we got like eight minutes before we got to wrap up because I got to switch over to a, a private community Zoom. So question, go. Floor is yours. Cool. Appreciate it. Glad to hear from you guys. Um, so, uh, Paul, I'm not as familiar with your work, but you look like a really buff guy. Um, I've been reading that's more. It, that's about... all I need to know. <laughs> <Just kidding. Yeah. laughs> um, I've read your book, Rich, and I've started reading Rollo's Thanks. books, uh, the Rational Male series as well. And one of the things he talks about is obviously in your 20s, um, girls are more body aware. Um, they're not as concerned about uh, what you can provide for them. Besides, they're more looking just for that instantaneous you know, experience. And so mm -hmm. as a younger guy in his 20s, would you say to be focusing or doubling down on kind of uh, fitness, uh, body perception, trying to make yourself, you know, you know, as best looking as you can be, not just for them, of course, but just, you know, feeling better, being the best person you can be, um, just trying to kind of gauge. So, I... Okay, so let me break it down for you like this. Um, <laughs> like 23-year-old women... Uh, are totally fine with a Chad that doesn't have any money, but has a plan. Okay. If you're a 40 year old guy and you've been through the divorce machine and you're a Chad, but you got no money, you got ground up and spit out the other end. You're living in your parents' basement. She's got no patience for you. It doesn't even matter if you have a great plan. Okay. So when you're younger, being, being good looking and, and having a plan is totally fine. You don't have to have bank just yet, but if you're an older guy, you have to be good looking and you have to have bank or like the plan doesn't matter. Like 
they don't have patience for dudes that haven't got their uh, lives sorted. They might on a girl's night out, you know, in a nightclub or what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. They might do the hookup sort of thing, but anything more than that, no, it doesn't work out. So as a young guy, yeah, you know, the, the, the optics of looks matter, but start doing something to lay the foundation of your life. It's why Rolo says and why I echo the exact same sentiment. Don't get in a long-term monogamous relationships in your 20s. Lay the foundation of your life. Spin plates. Have fun. Learn, you know, learn what drives women, but focus on yourself. Lay the groundwork. That's those are the blueprint years. Yeah, no, I yeah. completely agree. Yeah, I just I recently got out of the uh, long-term relationship. Made that mistake. Too many red flags to count. Um, yeah, and so just trying to get engulfed into this whole man sphere, you know. Cool. I got one more guy that I want to take a question from. Are you good? Did that help? Yeah, appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, Cam, what's up, bro? Sorry, man. I yeah. wanted to squeeze you in there. Yeah, no worries. Uh, hey, Rich. Hey, Paul. Good to see you guys again. So I wanted to um, actually just mention the whole uh, five love languages thing. I caught on to it because I was, um, you know, before I got to you, Rich, I was like trying to figure out this whole dating thing altogether. And I, the five love languages, I thought at the time made sense. And it's kind of like a, like a re revelation thing for me, but I realized it was, it was just in the end of when I think about it, I'm so glad you guys brought it up because it's just a matter of like qualifying. And it's almost like a race where you're just trying to keep up. It's a nonstop keeping up with the opposite gender. And to me, it doesn't like put you in a winning position at all with the, uh, with the lady that you're in a relationship with, or if you're dating. Mm -hmm. So no, I agree with you guys. It's not really like a question, but I just wanted to, you know, thank you for letting me just come on and like, you know, share my thoughts about it as well. Because when you, when, when you, when you listen to you, when I listen to you guys, everything just makes more sense and it comes off more logical. But when I hear, you know, I remember like, I, I'm the kind of guy when I go on dates, sometimes I do get in logical discussions. I've like, you know, I've, I've prevented that from happening yeah, you now. Bite your tongue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, now it's like, there's no more of this, like, Oh, like I used to ask, like, what is your love language? I'm like, God, I feel like such a cornball from like asking that back then. So <laughs> I don't do that anymore. And I, you know, again, thank you guys for bringing this up. This is a really important subject for a lot of guys out there who are just getting into the sphere and they're going to find out like you guys are talking about and disputing it. And not a lot of people know about this stuff. Well, maybe we'll catch, you know, catch some Thanks, attention man. with it. We'll probably catch some heat too, but who cares? <laughs> Thanks, Cam. <laughs> See you, bro. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, uh, let me get these one more. I got one more super chat here, and then we'll wrap her up. The uh, is a transformation picture good to have on my social media, or is that a turn off to chicks knowing you let yourself go in the past? Um, okay, let me turn let me sum it up for it. you. Hang on, I'll sum it up for you because I always got the best one liners out there in this in this club. <laughs> women are concerned about men's futures. Men are concerned about women's past. Okay, she doesn't fucking care what you look like in the past. Do you look hot now? Have you got bank? Are you making bank? You know, do people admire you? Do men want to be you? Do women want to be with you? That's all she cares about right now. It doesn't matter if you're 400 pounds before and you let yourself go. That does not matter. Okay. Um, so skip the transformation. Just just go with a good photography right now. And oh, Rolo's in the chat. His, uh, his love language is uh, <laughs> the Hershey Highway. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rolo, you're gonna you're gonna regret that chat now. Some somebody somewhere, <laughs> some some doomer or somebody, you know who I'm talking about, is gonna twist some it around. Losers, some losers twist YouTube around video. and they're gonna do an eight hour I'm cast confused. about it. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> um Gary Gray, it's all about mindset. Uh walk into bar and ask, is she good enough for me? Not I'm good enough for her. Exactly. You are the fucking prize. Yeah. Uh same BS with men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Totally true. All right. Oh, um, Let's start to wrap it up. I got to switch over to a private community Zoom uh, for my members. If you're a YouTube channel member, go to the community tab if you want to join us. I'm going to grab the link for Zoom and drop it there for you guys as well because it's, it's part of the perks. Um, so check that out. Um, I think it's like tier two or higher or something like that. Paul, tell people where they can find you because uh, some people don't even know who you are. Yeah, so just go search Apex Mindset up on YouTube, and that's the best place to find me. Um, I'm on Instagram, of course, and Facebook, but get on YouTube and do that. Right now, it says Paul. That was stupid of me over yesterday. Uh, so I'll fix it, and it'll say Apex Mindset. And uh, when you do a search in the search bar, it should actually come up, although a lot of my stuff is banned, but whatever. <laughs> so Check him out. He's got better. 
he's got some good content. He's an up and comer. Um, you know, I enjoy working with him. I'm sure he'll be back on the channel again on a certain, you know, in the future. Maybe we'll do like a book club on like the number one dating category book and see if we <laughs> praise it or if we yes. tear it apart. That's going to be actually a really good show. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, smash the like button. Leave a comment below. Also, we're coming up on episode 100. There's seven more, but so seven weeks. But give me some idea of what it is you want me to do for the 100th episode. Maybe we'll uh, you know pull out, some, pull, pull out some stops and go big on that one. But uh, yeah. Oh, quickly before I go, I got a shout out to my channel sponsor. Paul, I'm going to move you out of the way for a second here. All right. Stand by. <laughs> Stand by. Over my shoulder, Tactical Soap, Grand Dyke Soap Company. Check it out. You guys are showering. Anyway, grab some. Uh, Scott's been a great supporter of the channel for the longest time. Most uh, men's toiletry companies like to make fun at men and flick boogers at them and say that masculinity is toxic. Not this guy. He puts together a handmade soap. It's pheromone infused. It doesn't have any endocrine disruptors in it. You can get a beard oil uh, or the pheromone sticks. These little guys over here, they look like little deodorant sticks, but they're just like top up. So check it out. It's at coopersoap.com. Or if you're watching the replay, I will have it pinned in the top comment. I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll be back next week. Same place, same time. Oh, and on Wednesday, I'll release the video I was talking about at the start of the video. I did this breakdown on Darren Hardy's uh, take on the love languages and how you can improve your relationships with it. I just, you know, applied a rational, logical lens to what he was providing. I think overall his business stuff is great, but this stuff, you're going to love it. It's on Wednesday. It'll probably be out around noon. I just have to get the uh, final edit treatments done and the thumbnail. So 